Welcome to Wine Time. Time. I'm Rachel. And I'm Heather. Where two moms will pour a drink and tell you stories or complain about moms. This is Wine Time. Time. The good, the badass, and and the the crime. crime. (laughs) But I already pressed it. Surprise! I I didn't know if you saw it. I I see. You you. can see it. I was trying to trick you. <laughs> Hello, Heather. Welcome Good back, everybody. Good morning. Slash Hello, afternoon. Wine. If Buckets. you li- <laughs> wine. Bucket. <laughs> Welcome to the shit show. Welcome to the wine uh, bucket. <laughs> wine bucket. Everybody jump on into the bucket. <laughs> um, make a song. Ding, 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 ding. Everyone needs jump to make on into the bucket. Yes. That's what he needs. Oh my god! That's like ding a ding a ding 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 bomb bucket. <laughs> That's what I need to tell him. He needs to write a rap. Yes. Called wine buckets. Wine okay. buckets. I need to update it on him, for him. For I'm him. super um, super but, down. Hey 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 hey! Happy recording happy day. Happy recording um, day. Let me just take a sip of my what's uh, up, girl. My uh, oh, I've yeah, got what you some. drinking in that pretty cup. My beautiful uh, wine time wine glass or uh, coffee yes. glass. Um, I've got it is a double. I think like chiaro is like the flavor or whatever Nespresso drink, and I've been adding instead of like my regular creamer, I got fancy, and I started adding mm-hmm. uh, like vanilla almond milk to it, and it was pretty good. I have Ooh, to say, and I feel like it gives nice. me more, you know, like volume of. Because I just add more milk than I would creamer. And so I feel like I get to draw out my coffee a little bit more, and it makes me happy. Nice. (laughs) That's what's up. I I was looking forward to the fact that I thought you were going to have a mimosa. I know. I can't. I need to find. uh, I need to find my champagne. So, because we went on that trip to uh, Paso Robles, where we ended up at the same winery. Mm that you took me um, for the bachelorette party. And uh, we didn't end up buying any champagne there. I don't even know if they had any. But I swear to God, we came back from that trip with more alcohol than we started, which just doesn't make any sense, right? Because you're supposed to, like, drink it while (laughs) while you're there. Because we bought a couple wine glasses there. And, like, I so we started digging into the wine instead of the champagne that I had brought. So I definitely have it. But I'm going to be really honest. I have no idea where I put it when we got back from that trip. (laughs) (laughs) That's okay. That's okay. We'll do plenty more. I know. What are you drinking? You are fine. Well, you know. (laughs) You know I'm drinking. (laughs) Even though I have COVID. (laughs) So I can't taste it. I will tell you it's good, even though I can't taste it. Oh, man. <laughs> um, this is a lavender whiskey. Mm-hmm. It is delicious. So I will tell you from from the, the time I could taste it. It was oh, very good. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. I mean, I've had, I had apparently, air quotes, um, gotten COVID before, but I had never lost lost the yeah. taste or anything like that so this time around it really kicked my butt and um i lost my my taste but okay so anyways this is lavender whiskey with soda water and a little bit of cranberry juice which sounds weird but it's actually who knows if it's good or not. <laughs> i was gonna say how do you know <laughs> I just needed another liquid in there <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just needed something other than just whiskey because, oh, you know, I could just pour the whole bottle of whiskey in there, but That's then crazy. we would have way too much fun on this podcast. <laughs> we are limited to the amount of fun we are allowed to have. Dang. Um, yeah, so it is a bummer, but it's cold there you and go. refreshing. Whatever it is feels feels good and makes me happy. Counts. So Counts. that's what's happening right now. And also, it's sad because even though... Th- so, one of the things is like, you know, they say you lose your taste or whatever. Right. But things just taste weird or different or whatever. Wa- water is like my favorite thing ever. It's disgusting. What? It's disgusting. 
No Water way. Water is disgusting. Like, it just has, like, I think it's because I have, like, this weird taste in my mouth right. that's constantly there. So, like, as I'm drinking water, I'm just like, Ugh. No, um, that stinks. It's annoying. So, if any of you guys have experienced this, sorry. And also, holla at your girl and let me know how long till you got it back. Because if, <laughs> if this... If this is my life, just take me out. Yeah, that's I'm done. <laughs> my time is done. Oh my I gotta God. taste things. Speaking of yeah, uh, so, tasting oh, things, oh well. <clears throat> so, last I have just been so hungry the last couple of days. I don't know yeah. what it is. I have just been like nonstop wanting to eat, and I originally was like, oh, it's probably just you know, like maybe Tempe is like. um going through a growth spurt so like she's eating more which means I have to produce more breast milk which means like I'm extra hungry but last night (laughs) we're sitting there on the couch and I was pumping and I was just like Zach and so I'm like attached to the pump and I'm like Zach I'm so freaking hungry right now and he's like well what do you want I was like he's like do you want this and I was like no and he's like do you want this no what do you want this? No, but if you don't get me something right now, I'm going to lose it. And, like, I can't go get it because I'm attached to the freaking pump. So he just comes back and he throws down hot Cheetos, like some cheese crackers, Oreos, like a, a like a protein bar. And I, I throw the protein bar and I throw the Oreos and I grab the hot Cheetos and I'll go get me oh some God. chopsticks, right? Because have you done that where you eat hot Cheetos with chopsticks so you don't get the stuff all over no, your fingers? No, I haven't. I (laughs) okay it's okay I always thought like why not just get it all over your fingers who cares but I was pumping so I didn't want to like get my hands too gross because then afterwards you know you have to like touch the bottles and stuff yeah so I was like go get me chopsticks and I'm sitting there and I'm chopsticking my hot Cheetos and then I was like I'm still hungry and then he looks at me and he goes you're not pregnant are you and I was like (gasps) oh my gosh God, no, I At hope the not. Oh, <laughs> shit. At the anniversary. I would be so, like, no way. Because as much as I love my children, I couldn't handle that right now. <laughs> <laughs> or probably, like, ever. <laughs> I'm just oh. like, no way. But yeah, That's and so I'm random. still, so this day, it's just, like, right now, I'm like, I could eat, like, a full meal. And still be hungry. So I'm just hoping it's the temp- Tempe's growth spurting or something and it will calm down in no, another think, like couple days. I think, I think days. you're hungry. You're trying to grow. You have a growth spurt. You're trying to grow your hair back. <laughs> so you are trying hungry. to grow my <laughs> <laughs> My teeny tiny <laughs> little baby hairs. Oh, I ate it so much. I swear. And it's, like, way worse this time around. It's, like, way worse this time than it was with Evie. And I'm just, like... But the, the flip remember. side oh is... God. You don't remember losing hair? <clears throat> no, but I also... I feel like a lot of it comes, like, from prenatals and actually, like, doing what you're supposed to do <laughs> as a pregnant person, which I wasn't able to do. Because <laughs> you, so, you were throwing um, up 24-7? Yeah. So, whatever. I didn't get the nutrition I needed to help me lose hair. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Whatever. Oh, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Maybe I'll lose it during COVID and then I'll let you know. Yeah, let me know how anymore. that hair regrowth the thing. It just sucks because, like, I. S- the wall. What I was going to say is the nice thing is with Evie, when it started growing back, I was still, like, actually, you know, going into an office to work. So I would spend a long time in the morning just trying to tame my little baby hairs that were growing back. And now I work from home, so I'm like, you know what? Let the baby hairs fly. (laughs) Yep. Let them fly. Let them fly. That's funny. Well, I mean, I'm sorry that you're starving constantly, but hey, be nice to Zach. All right. Don't be throwing no Oreos at him. (laughs) You're right. Be I should nice. be nicer. He's the one who actually went up and got me food, so I should be nicer. I know. I know it's hard. <clears throat> but let's let's jump on, jump on into um we have a couple updates for you guys. We are obviously this is new still and we are trying to see what works best for us and grow as we go. Like it. Heather let them know a couple things. I'll let them know a couple things. So uh, one thing that is pretty cool that we're excited about 
is this whole time that we we have been in your ears or in your stereo, we've actually been recording video as well, but we've obviously yet to post those uh, <laughs> in a yeah. organized fashion, so to speak, but we want to start doing that. So yes. listen up and get ready for, and also not just listen up, but like watch up because now you're going to be able to see us. We're going to start um, a YouTube <laughs> where you can oh, yeah. now not only listen along, but if you want, uh, you can watch along because we make some funny faces and we do some funny things uh, that you can't see. <laughs> um, and and I think you'd, you'd really enjoy seeing. So we're not going to post like every single episode that we've recorded, um, but we're going to start with some small things here or there. And we think you guys uh, will get a kick at it, especially because... Uh, one in particular I'm thinking of is just the best uh, Rachel face I've ever seen in my whole entire life. So, <laughs> can't wait for that. So, be on the lookout for that. We will announce it and let you guys know. And then you guys could see everything that we talk about when Benny comes and makes, like, little <laughs> right. uh, guest appearances or when my daughter shows up or whatever's happening during the day. Another thing that we did is <clears throat> we created a link tree. Um, we added it to all of the different social media accounts. So you guys can click on that. We're still learning all about all of this. So you click it and you can find, you know, our social media accounts, where you can find the episodes, all of that kind of stuff. So I'm sure if you're listening right now, you already know how to do that. But it's just like a little win in our book, something to check off. So that's very exciting for us as well. Like I said, this is just a little update. The fact that we are just kind of moving forward, progressing, uh, growing, all of going and growing, <laughs> going and growing. And you guys need to show so we can grow. So share all of our shit. And I, I know we've been talking a lot, but I have to tell something really, really quick. Even though nothing I ever say is really, really quick. Sorry, everyone who doesn't like the banter in the beginning. Before Heather tells her case. I don't know if... Did I tell you that there was a murder on my route? What? At work. You, no. I think, told me um, once that, hold on, there's a bunch of cops. And I think maybe no, you said there was something. But I know, but I wasn't... I didn't know. I never heard the whole story. So please let me know. No, this one. So since I have been here, there has been at least five shootings. Oh my on God. my route alone so my route alone but on saturday night um so that's why i wasn't sure if i had like told you yet but on saturday night i was sitting out by the bonfire and with like joel and the kids and everything and i get a text like a screenshot from the police page from one of my coworkers, and he's like hey check this out obviously a shooting on my route and so the next morning the the guy did succumb to his injuries and he he passed no and way. oh i just have to tell you like first of all ridiculous that you know so ridiculous crazy. he the the person was not a mom so i'm not going to be covering it obviously but he was only 19. Oh, he was only no, 19. baby. Um, who knows what, what he's doing, whatever. It's not okay. All of it is awful. I can't. I just don't want to hear these kind of things. But the reason I wanted to bring it up to you today, um, dude, seriously, my anxiety yeah. has been so high. And I just, I go there, I show up and I'm like, it's not worth it. Like, I don't get paid enough to just be here and feel nervous. And obviously, no. like, but you never know. You, you never don't. Know. Yeah. So I'm just like out there all day yesterday. Uh-uh. And my head was on a swivel. And I am just like. Rachel. <laughs> panicky. <laughs> like, no. I just was so not okay. Yeah, it sucked. It was really, really annoying. Um, but one of the, one of the good things that. I want to say is this office I have like loved my change in in offices obviously the area I don't need to say where because I don't need anyone come and look for me <laughs> but where the shooting had taken place um I had just arrived to that block mm -hmm. um that area and so I have like three different apartments and I don't I don't know exactly where it was right like which apartment it was at or whatever I, I didn't look it up or whatever um but 
I get to the first one, and I do the first mailbox, and I'm driving to the next mailbox, and I see my supervisor. Aww. And I'm just like, well, so I'm an asshole. And so you're like, what are you doing? (laughs) Yeah. I'm like, you really want to come do a straight observation today? You want to do a straight observation today on me? Like, F that shit, you know? And I'm just irritated, and I'm just like, man, go away. And so he comes over and he parks by the box and I'm a dick. So I said that to him. I was like, today, you want to come to a street (laughs) observation today, Kevin? And he's like, he's like, I actually just came out here to be your bodyguard and like hang out with you for a little bit so that you don't feel alone. And I was like, I'm an asshole. Really sorry about that. (laughs) He's like, you're good. And I'm like, sorry. I feel like I'm so high strung and just like, so yeah, for sure. You know, whatever. But it it did feel good because I would have never felt that support back at my old office. So Aww. it just it feels good. Yay! Um, but yeah, I'm just like that's too one too many things, yeah. and I just I need to get off of that route. I'm over it. I'm so over it. So that's why okay, that's why everyone there. you need to support our podcast so we can get really like podcast rich and famous, and Rachel can quit her job. <laughs> I have another job I want. I just can't afford to do it. <laughs> no, yeah. I I don't want to be there forever, but yeah. I mean, I love being outside. I love I love what I do like when I'm out there like doing it for the most part, but I don't like that feel of, you know, just yeah. psycho ass bitches. Hell no. Oh, like ooh, that's crazy. Ooh. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yep. Oh well, it is what it is. Well, so, shout out to your boss. Something I was going to shout tell out you. to your supervisor. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you, thank you, supervisor. That's really nice. Um, appreciate it because I know you're listening. Not <laughs> anyway. I was like, are um, they? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <shit>. No. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> definitely not. No, any of my any of my friends, go ahead and let them know I shouted them out. Thank yeah. you, sir. I appreciate it. <laughs> it felt good. Um. All right, but yeah. today Heather is telling her case, and and I know nothing. I know a little sneak peek of of like the category. Okay, um, but other than that, right. I don't know the rest. So I'm so excited. So I yes. kind of we started out saying, okay, we're gonna do ten. We're gonna start with a ten episode series on crimes. So obviously, in my head, I'm like this one, this one, this one, this one, and then we're now like nearing the end where where we don't we don't have like 10 episodes left and i always we could save them for later but i didn't want to so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna like rapid fire a bunch of stories at you about mom crimes but the cool thing about all of these stories is if you want to know more about them and more detail because a lot of these stories have so much crazy detail that comes out during investigation during trial that like unless I had like a full hour there's no way I would be able to cover all of these but so with all of these there's either like a Netflix documentary an HBO documentary a Hulu show something where if you like what you hear you can go watch more about it and we want to know which ones are your favorite yeah let us know which ones are your favorite the podcast is going to continue, so the True Crime series episodes will come back, mm-hmm. and I am positive, I know of at least one that I'm covering. For yeah, sure. like, if so, you if you um, listen yeah, to this today, yeah. and you're like, ooh, I really like that one, and you want to know more about it, let us know, and then when True Crime comes back around on this podcast, I can cover it, or Rachel can cover it in more detail. All right, yeah. you ready? Yeah, buddy. Okay, so the Hell yeah. the so excited. <laughs> the first one is I mean anyone who's like into true crime, especially like mom related true crime, like you have to have heard about this. But there's and there's so many crazy details. But this is the murder of Dee Dee Blanchard by her daughter Gypsy Rose and her daughter's boyfriend, who I don't know how to say his last name. Nicholas, you think it's Gudgeon? God John? Gudgeon? No, it's go to John. Oh, go to John. Thank you, Rachel. So, You're um, <laughs> so they have. I, think. <laughs> I like go to John. That's Not, how I, I hear like it. it. Go to John. I like it. 
So there is a documentary on HBO called uh, Mommy, Dad, and Dearest, which I've seen parts of back in the day when that one first came out. But more recently, Hulu actually made a show with Joey King as um, Gypsy Rose called The Act. So you can check that out, too. The basics of this one. June 14th, 2015, uh, Claudine... Dee Dee Blanchard's murdered body was found in her home where she had been stabbed days earlier. And she was found because um, some people were concerned about some Facebook posts that they had seen that read, That Bitch is Dead. And this was coming from a joint account of Dee Dee and her daughter, Gypsy Rose. So, right. Dee Dee's daughter, Gypsy Rose, who, according to Dee Dee, had leukemia, asthma, muscular dystrophy, brain damage, all of these ailments was not in the house when they found the body. So initially they thought it might have been some kind of like abduction case. But what ended up happening was police tracked the IP address of the post and they found uh, Gypsy Rose with her boyfriend in Wisconsin where they had actually ran away together. Mm -hmm. So basically, Dee Dee faked all the illnesses that Gypsy had, uh, basically since she was born. And, I mean, there's, like, the detail that you can read or watch about in terms of all the things that this mom basically did to this child in order to get, like, the attention is insane i mean right i'm i'm not saying like murder is like justified in this situation but it was some pretty like effed up stuff and like i said lots and lots Mm -hmm. of detail i'm not going to go into all of it because it would take an extra long time this is like a pretty severe case of munchausen's by proxy which we which we've talked about before when we did my first case but yeah, it is pretty bad. But basically, Dee Dee was faking all of Gypsy's illnesses, and Gypsy didn't have any of those issues. She was actually smart enough to <clears throat> use the internet at night after her mom went to sleep. She had online dating accounts. She had like separate Facebook accounts, all without her mom knowing. And that's right. how she met this boyfriend. Uh, go to go to John, and they actually planned all of this out. And so they had tried a couple times to, you know, like accidentally like run into each other, things like that. Um, But the mom, you know, just Mm -hmm. she wasn't having it. At the end of the day, they plan this all out. Dee Dee goes to sleep. Gypsy lets him into the house. He stabs her while Gypsy is just hiding in the bathroom. And then they... Uh, run away together basically like Bonnie and Clyde it they they get caught yeah obviously and Gypsy Rose is found guilty of second degree murder and she's serving a 10 year sentence and then the boyfriend is convicted of first degree murder and he's sentenced to um, life without parole that one is yeah. an insane story. Yeah. When that I story is crazy. It's so that, crazy. Yeah. When I first heard of this, because you see like the pictures of this mom and daughter, and it's just, it's, I mean, it's crazy. It's some crazy stuff. So if you want to know more about that one, like I said, um, there's a really good HBO documentary, and then they turned it into a show on Hulu. So that is yes. uh, Dee Dee and Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Which I want to cover, by the way, because that is actually one of the ones that just, I know a lot. You I should. Lot, you should, but, because um, there's so much I detail. I have gone down <laughs> rabbit, rabbit holes rabbit that holes. one. Yeah. <laughs> there's so much rabbit oh, holes to go like, down. so much. <clears throat> For sure. For sure. Okay, so the the next one I have is really extra super Ooh. sad, but also oh. like has a very crazy twist. This is the murder of mother and daughter Brenda and Erica Lafferty. And this come um, mm-hmm. if you want to know more about it, the um, you can read Under the Banner of Heaven, which is a book by John Krakauer, and Hulu actually just turned it into a mini series. So I watched with Andrew Garfield. 
So I watched the Hulu miniseries about it, and it's freaking creepy. Like, creepy. But it basically, the whole thing is it's, it's jumping back and forth between the murder investigation. So in the show, um, Andrew Garfield plays the, like the detective who is investigating the murder. And it's jumping back and forth between the murder investigation and kind of the beginnings of the Church of Latter-day Saints, of the Mormon church. And kind of like, okay, so the whole thing, it has this like fundamentalist, like LDS Mormon church like spin. Um, but basically... On July 24th, 1984, Brenda, who was only 24 at the time, and her daughter, who was just a baby, like she was like 15 months, 18 months maybe, Mm -hmm. Um, so, so freaking sad. They were like violently murdered, violently murdered, and they were found Mm -hmm. by her husband, Alan, in their Utah apartment. Two of Alan's five brothers, actually, Ron and Dan Lafferty, were responsible so have you heard of this one before? Yeah. 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 So it's like so, so, I have shivers right now thinking about it because like it's, it's yeah, so it's fucked up. Basically, they fled the state after they committed these murders, um, but they were arrested weeks later in Reno in Nevada and they didn't even deny killing Brenda and Erica. Well, he said he was, he was made like he was supposed to do this exactly what he's supposed to do yes exactly so ron claimed he had received like a message like a revelation from god to quote unquote remove his sister-in-law and niece yeah so this so there's a lot of crazy background no you didn't no you didn't yeah no you didn't you're a freaking psycho so there's a lot of (laughs) crazy background (laughs) yeah false they have a lot they cover a lot of it in the show because a lot of it is linked back to you know like fundamentalist mormon church and kind of like all this crazy stuff but basically after both dan and ron were excommunicated from like the church of latter-day Saints, from like the mormon church they got into this fundamentalist kind of like extremist fringe group of the mormon church which was called like school of prophets and they basically believed mm-hmm. that the current day, you know, primary Mormon church had violated some of the founding, you know, rules of Mormonism because they banned plural marriage and they were the current church was allowing black converts. So originally, you know, Mormonism had plural marriage but not plural marriage like plural wives it was never the other way around and um they did not allow anyone who was black to be part of the church so the current mormon church has you know changed those rules and realized that it was stupid and has changed those rules so um but Dan, in particular, he got, like, super into this and was trying to get all of his brothers to be part of this kind of, like, breakaway sect. And he wanted Ron, who I think was, like, the oldest brother, to quit his job and completely, like, devote himself to, like, this this school of prophets or whatever. And Ron, he, for, I don't know the whole, but he basically got convinced either by his brother or this church or whatever that he was a prophet and that he kept saying that he was getting like revelations or messages directly from god and like he's a psycho all of the i mean at the end of the day when you're you're watching it you realize that it, like ron and dan just didn't like brenda who and cause, so she had been married to alan for like two years but she was she was college educated she was like assertive you know a lot of ideas in mormonism is that you know the the woman or the wife should be submissive and subservient and everything to to for the husband and she kind of was like no uh (laughs) i'm not even though she was mormon and she believed in the mormon church she still didn't think that she needed to be like completely submissive to her husband so what it was was ron had a wife and kids and he if you watch the show or you read the book he was being abusive to his wife and so brenda was actually like leave him like you need to like you can't stay in a relationship like that and um so she encouraged her um ron's wife to leave and he obviously was really pissed about that 
Right. Yeah. So <laughs> at the end of the day, uh, both they were caught. You know, they were tried and convicted in separate trials. Dan is uh, currently serving a life pr- pr- sentence in prison. And Ron was actually convicted um, and was given the death penalty. But he ended up dying in prison um, in 2019. The crazy thing is, right, it's like this happened in 1985. Maybe the trial ended in 86. But he sat in prison yeah. from 86 to 2019 on a death penalty and was still and yeah. like was still there. Um, so that like that's the crazy part. Like, that happens so much. Yeah, that so many so times. Often. Like I know that there's a, there's a lot of rules and you know rightly so that make sure like there's trials and whatever to make sure that this per- but like this guy didn't even he this guy clearly did it he even said he did it so yeah that is a super like effed up story it's so 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 very sad but yeah so you can read the book under the banner of heaven i haven't read it yet i want to and or you can watch the the mini series on hulu andrew garfield is like super good in it yeah that one's that one's really sad so my next one is the murder of (laughs) drum roll please the next one I have is the murder of Shannon Watts and her daughters, Bella and Cece. Mm. Shannon was also pregnant, which makes it all the more this'll be sad. A, this'll be a, a case, by the way. Oh, nice. Okay. This will be covered. Good. Oh, I feel like everything you're doing will be covered. Will be covered. Be covered. So Good. This, this is, is like yeah. a little uh, preview yeah. then. It's like a trailer. So, yeah. They- this is a preview to our next series. <laughs> Yeah, the murder of Shannon Watts with her daughters, Belle and Cece. Um, she was also pregnant. Total freaking just, sorry, Terry, asshole of a husband and father, Christopher, who just is a complete dick. So uh, there's a Netflix documentary about this one called um, American Murder, The Family Next Door. And it's really interesting the way they piece it together because this is, you know, a more recent uh, occurrence. Like, it was, like, 2018. And so the way that the the Netflix documentary does it is they're kind of piecing together, like, Facebook posts and texts and home video footage and kind of bringing all that in. And it's it's really... It's crazy because you see how much stuff is, like, online. and But anyway, so in... August of 2018 mother Shannon and her daughters who were just like they were babies four and three years old were reported missing um, by one of Shannon's friends so when the cops came they found the house empty but the purse was still there her phone was still there her car was still there the car seats were still there so you know, and anyone who's a mom that has little kids knows, like, if you're taking those kids somewhere, like, the car seats are kind of, like, that's a big kind of red flag there. Right. But the FBI is called in, and they're working with the Colorado Bureau of Investigations. Um, and at first, this jerk, you know, he was putting on show saying, I don't know where they are. And he even went, like, on the news saying, like, you know, I, I just want them to come home. I miss them, blah, 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 blah. And they're doing searches with, like, dogs, everything. They're doing everything to try to find them. He was arrested a few days later, uh, and he failed a polygraph test. And that, and then after that is when he confessed to murdering Shannon. And there's a lot of um, details that come out in the investigation in terms of, like, motive and, you know, why he did it and stuff like that. Um, but pretty much he was having an affair and so what he claimed at first is he was asking Shannon or he was like telling her like he wanted to be like a separation or divorce or whatever and at first he said that he told her this and Shannon then in response to this strangled her daughters which is like whatever um and then that he in turn strangled shannon because he was so mad about her strangling their daughters but he's an idiot he was charged with three counts of first degree murder he pleaded guilty and later it came out that you know he he was he had strangled shannon and um one of the daughters had actually walked in 
and so knew and he 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 tried to say oh mom's just sick and then he eventually he kills um his two girls i just don't like i was watching it and this was a couple years back when it first came out when i was watching it and i was just like how could you he's an asshole but he's you know he's charged with three counts of first degree murder he pleads guilty the death penalty was actually not put forward even though it could have been because shannon's family actually requested Mm -hmm. it not because they didn't want any more death which you guys are good people because i would have been like get him out you're done yeah you're you're done. done Um, So he took a plea deal, basically, and he was sentenced to five life sentences, three consecutive and two concurrent without the possibility of parole. And then they really frickin' threw the book at him, think, like, good for them. He got an extra 48 years um, for the unlawful termination of Shannon's pregnancy, because she was pregnant at the time, and then an additional 36 years for three charges of tampering with a deceased body, because he was getting rid of um, her and the two girls' bodies. So they they really, like, did everything they could except the death penalty, which, you know, if it was requested by her family not to, like, I, you know, I, I understand that. And then after he was, um, like, a month after he was um, charged and convicted or whatever, he actually got moved to an out-of-state location because of security concerns. And I was like, they should have left his ass there and let him got shanked in prison. Like, I don't give a crap. Um, but he got end up he ended up moving to like Wisconsin, where probably people knew a little bit less of what he was there for, and that's where he's serving right. all his life sentences. But yeah, that case is so sad. Have you watched that documentary? Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Frickin'. of course I have. Um, real quick, so I don't know if you if you know I don't know if you know. Um, so his mom actually. I don't think it's not a published book. I think she, like, wrote it, if I'm correct, like, on Facebook. Mm. Like, on, like, a, like, she she wanted to or wants to make a book. The point I'm trying to get at (laughs) is she was trying to make him be the victim. Come on. Put it out there that he and she... Oh, sorry, like narcissistic fucking psychopath, but just making it seem like as if, and, and I think you say her name, Shanann, you hear it so many different ways. The point is, is as if she was so awful to him. Oh, yeah. She mm-hmm. was such like a, like a, a different kind of person that caused him to be this way. Right. And it ruined their family dynamic right and trying to say that she was like controlling and she like was like on him and stuff like yeah no it doesn't matter mom's just like playing this whole you know oh he he couldn't do this and my family because of this and i had to deal with this and this this and that and i'm just like are are you serious right now yeah like you are allowed to grieve yeah. But you're not allowed to grieve that way. No. You don't get to all of a sudden try to be like, oh, he's he's a victim. No. No, no ma'am. There is not a chance. There is not a way that you can twist it to make it seem that way. Mm-mm. Absolutely not. Nope. So that just to me. Yeah. Sorry, I needed to add yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That to me. But yes, I've I've seen and heard and I know. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, that one is a that one's a crazy one. That so, one's super crazy, and like it's so interesting because listener anyone. Well, yeah, well because the the crazy thing about that is the the way because she was like very active online. I think she did like one of those MLMs, like, and so she was very very active online. She was very very active on Facebook, and she you know had a lot. And so that's what's so interesting is is you know as we move along in times, so there's so much of this. I mean, you covered a lot of this in um morph morphu is morphu is like there's all of this data that's just like constantly like out there and so when they bring this into the yeah. investigation it really paints a picture and you can see that like, like he was just an asshole whatever screw you yeah yeah christopher it's, it's crazy it is crazy so yeah, um he's where he needs to be so the next one i have sad. is kathleen peterson Ooh. this is the staircase Ooh. 
Mm-hmm. This is like a Netflix documentary called The Staircase. It's like long, long running because it goes like the entire length of like this whole thing because it started when the trial first happened and then there's like appeals and retrials, all this crazy stuff. But there's now their HBO is coming out with like a show on it. I the the Netflix documentary is very know, good. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh my gosh, you've never heard of the staircase? I don't think I'm so. so excited to tell you about this one. So it's kind of older. It's from 2001. Basically, so December 2001, Michael Peterson calls 911. Oh, yeah. And okay. saying he just found Sorry. Kathleen Peterson. I was going to say it's pretty popular. Um I was like, "Wait, hold on." Yeah. Hold on. I'm <laughs> um, saying he just found Kathleen Peterson unconscious. No, I've never heard of this. What? Sorry. As soon as you said, okay, so when you no, said No, not that Peterson. Peterson. No, my, a different Scott. Peterson. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, so, okay. Well, no, and that's why. And then you said Michael Peterson, and I was like, yeah. wait. No, no, no. no. Different one. Right now? Okay. Different one. No, um, <clears throat> so December 9th, uh, 2001, Michael Peterson calls 911 saying he just found uh, Kathleen Peterson, his wife, unconscious, and he suspected she had fallen down the stairs because she's at the bottom of the stairs. So in this documentary, they play clips of the 911 call where he's calling and he's like frantic. Um, but judgment call, if you guys want to watch it, if you don't get freaked out by 911 calls, he sounds like the worst actor in the entire freaking world, like, it to me, it's completely insincere. But anyway, what he says um, when they start investigating is basically that that night they'd been outside in their backyard, um, hanging out, just, like, drinking. And then she had gone inside of the house, and he had stayed outside. And then he came in a little bit later and found her that way at the bottom of the stairs. So when they start doing, yeah, right? suspicious so when they start doing all of the like investigation so toxicology shows that she did have alcohol in her system she had some valium in her system and the autopsy report said that she had sustained severe injuries including fraction fractures and lacerations to her head which the coroner says is more consistent with blows from a blunt object not from an mm. accidental fall yeah. down the stairs um, and ultimately she died from blood loss from the injuries so there's so if you watch this documentary it's crazy so there's so many different like blood evidence physical evidence like looking at the lacerations on her head from like the from the like autopsy um, all of the the wounds that she had like not just on her head but on her body and blah blah blah, blah. And they bring in so many different, like, witness, expert people on blood and this and that. And, of course, the the defense has people saying, no, like, this is consistent with falling down the stairs. This is what could have happened. And then the prosecution side obviously has people saying, no, this is not consistent with, like, an accident. You know, this is definitely from, like, a blunt object. And they just go back and forth with all these witnesses. And as you're watching, if you watch, like, true crime stuff like forensic files you're like oh it's that dude oh it's that dude i've seen him on a million episodes of forensic files i've seen this guy on you know like whatever eventually you know he is charged with murder he pleads not um not guilty but he's he's convicted some crazy things that come out though during the um during the investigations was that he they find out that he actually had like a secret he was secretly gay or bisexual i'm not sure and he was actually seeing men outside of their marriage and so the prosecution kind of is claiming that what happened is she finds out about it you know and he murders her um for it and then the defense though is saying and he's saying no no she knew she knew about this and she'd come to terms with it she was okay with the fact that he was seeing men outside of their marriage There was also a whole thing, an investigation that came out because Kathleen was actually the second woman in his life to be found with head wounds at the bottom of some stairs. So, Oh, really? Yeah! (laughs) I was sitting here like, I need to look more into it. I need to look more into it because I I don't know this case or whatever. It's so good. So So so, I'm just like, is it? Is it real? It's so interesting. So, like, 20 years earlier, so this wasn't his wife, but, like, 20 years earlier, him and his family were having dinner, and I think it was, like, in Germany or Italy. I think it was Germany. 
um, they lived there. They were having dinner at like a friend's house. And this was with his first wife. This wasn't with Kathleen. We're having dinner at a friend's house. And he stayed behind. His wife and kids like left. He stayed behind to, I don't know, like help put her kids to sleep or something. And then the next day, he was the last person to see this woman alive. The next day, right. she's found in her house, dead at the bottom of some stairs with head wounds. And when mm. when that came out, you were like, what the fuck? Like, that's crazy. Yeah. And so they go... Because I was thinking, like, I don't know enough. Like, I need to look into it. Yeah. Like, I can't... I don't point the finger until I've done my own research and make up my own mind. Yeah. And I'm just over here like, who knows? Because I've been drunk. I've fallen. And you've fallen? <laughs> right. You know? No, it's... I, you really... Yeah. And they're so, so like I'm I said... like, who, who knows? But... Hmm. Maybe Twice. you could cover it, hmm. or I could cover it, because there's so much detail in when it cut. Because they, they, it went through mm-hmm. trials and appeals and retrials and all this freaking evidence that's coming out, oh. and then this whole <clears throat> thing comes out. And like, I really don't know about this one. Like, it really could have been, but who knows? Because it's it, because it happened overseas. There's all these issues about getting, you know, access to like the reports and blah blah blah. blah. But like, they bring that up, and you're like, what the. The other thing that when you're reading about this story, which it this is just like an insane one, is there's what's called the owl theory. Okay, so this part I know. So who? this is crazy. Who? 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 So yeah, who? Who? They found owl feathers on um, Kathleen's body, like microscopic or something, like small owl feathers, and and I think they also found like like found like little pieces of bark. So one of his neighbors, Michael Peterson's neighbors, I know, (laughs) one of his neighbors who was not, I think he's a lawyer, but he was not like part of the case or anything like that. He said that what must have happened is she, she was, while she was walking back into the house, she was attacked by an owl like a big owl with talons or something and in her like a what? Sp- I know. <laughs> no keep going keep going so in, her, in her like attempt to escape she's running from the owl attack and she trips and falls and that's so they're saying that the lacerations on her head were not from a blunt object, but were from, like, owl talons. And then any other of the injuries is because she fell trying to escape the owl. Dude, it's insane. (laughs) I need to go buy a TV. I need to go buy a TV. Go buy a TV and watch it. They, this whole thing, they do talk about it in the Netflix one. It is, it's just something else because you go from, like, wait, what? An owl, like an owl, like a hoo hoo owl, and you're like sitting there going. <laughs> but you're saying she had feathers and stuff. She all had. Over they her? found like, like feathers. I can't remember if they found it like on her head or in her hand, but there they found feathers on her body. But like they were like small, fe- not like here's a big old feather. Like they were like small, teeny feathers. So I don't know. <laughs> But she was out. She had been outside, and then like was she? (laughs) She had been outside. Hello, fight. (laughs) Mm. I don't think they use apples Mm. and owl feathers and (laughs) pillows. But so yeah, that I mean, there's a lot of different stuff. So this one's a good case. I'm kind of like you really should. It's it's very interesting um, to read about. But ultimately, he like he was found guilty. Um, there ended up being, so this is, I mean, this is like a nonstop thing. There ended up being a retrial because one of the principal, is that your dog or your daughter? (laughs) My dog. Oh, um, there ended up being a retrial because one of the main witnesses against Peterson was actually suspended. I heard that. Is that the dog? Oh my God. Does Derby have that toy? Sounds like sex noises. <laughs> freaking chicken. Oh, Derby. Oh, man. 
every time she uses that toy, I keep thinking there's like sex noises going on in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the first time you ever heard that toy, and you, you were like, "Are you watching <laughs> porn in the background?" And I'm like, "No, <laughs> what do you mean?" That's what it sounds like. Uh, Kenzie must have let her out. Oh, man. Kenzie's like, she look, if I can't go out there, Derby's going out there. Um, yep, exactly. And so, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So there ended up being a retrial because one of the main witnesses against Peterson was actually suspended for doing, like, shoddy work. And so any case that he had worked on comes under investigation again. So what ends up happening is Peterson then does what's called an Alford plea, which is this weird type of plea deal, right, where they say, look, all of the evidence says you're guilty. You're saying you're, but you're saying you're innocent. It's weird. But he ended up getting um, voluntary manslaughter. But because he had already served the max sentence in jail for for, or in prison for voluntary manslaughter um, in between the time of the trial and the retrial, after that, he got out. So he's out. And the and then the the real another interesting thing about so at the beginning of this, he has um, I think he has two kids from his previous marriage. She had kids that I don't think were his biological kids. And so they're like a blended family, and, a, and originally everyone's on his side. All of the kids are saying, like, we believe you, there's no way you murdered her, da 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 And then, like, just slowly as, like, evidence comes out and stuff, the daughters especially, like, they kind of are like, no, we don't believe you anymore. And so it's like, you see just, like, this family also just, like, fall apart. It's crazy. Yeah. That is Kathleen Peterson and The Staircase. You got to watch that one on um, That's crazy. Netflix. Yeah. 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 So the the last one I have is it's not a like a bomb m- murder per se, but this one is just like especially cool and kind of <laughs> and I think it definitely gets into badass mom territory as well. So this is ma- <laughs> go derby go. <laughs> Derby's like <laughs> where are all these toys coming from? Great. I'm sorry. I put her back in the room. I'm sorry. That's okay. Dogs just want to have fun. They do. She wants to hear about Michelle McNamara. So. Um, yeah, so do I. Yes. Um, Michelle McNamara. She is, was, uh, rest in peace, was a badass mom who basically is responsible for helping track down the Golden State Killer. So you can read I'll Be Gone in the Dark, written by Michelle McNamara, she was a wife she was a mother and then hbo actually made like a show about it i haven't watched the hbo show based off of this book that she read but i have read the book it's bomb sauce um she's awesome but it's great like the beginning of the book start like i think it's the prologue starts like that summer i hunted the serial killer at night from my daughter's playroom so like she she was amazing so she was yeah it's like probably one of like the OG true crime mom junkie people. She yeah, right. she had a website called True Crime Diaries. So she was fascinated with true crime like a lot of moms and um she says that it all started with the unsolved murder of Kathleen Lombardo who actually that all happened a couple blocks from where she lived when she was younger. You know, she was interested in true crime and she got specifically interested in the crimes of an unidentified he was rapist and murderer and he was known as the east area rapist the original night soccer and the visalia ransacker and at first you know and of course this was all happening a, a long not a long time ago but early early on when um you know departments were talking that much and stuff and he had kind of done this all up and down california so people didn't know it was the same person but then right. partly because of her and her research they all of those crimes end up getting linked together by DNA, and she's the one that actually came up with the name the Golden State Killer. Crazy. Yeah, so she did crazy amounts of research, 
And she actually worked closely with, like, cops and, and detectives and investigators who normally, you know, she's just a civilian, you know, normally wouldn't be given access to this kind of information. But she was so good. Her research was just so awesome. But she was about two-thirds of the way finished with her book when she actually died. Completely unrelated. Um, but she actually died. It was really sad. Very untimely death. And... What ends up happening is a couple of true crime writers and her um, husband, her widower, Patton Oswalt, who's like actually a he's an he's an actor. They they edited the book, they finished it, and it was released about two years after her death in 2018. And then shortly after the release of the book, HBO said that they were going to turn it into a documentary series, which came out in June of 2020. So. The crazy freaking thing, because we, we know now, like, the Golden State Killer has been caught. The crazy thing about that, right, is that, right. so she died in 2016. The book comes out a few years later in twenty in February of 2018. And then in April of 2018, they freaking catch this guy. They catch the Golden State Killer. And they ta- they she talks about it in the book. Um, but eventually they found him using, like, genetic genealogy, right? Like, I don't know if it was 23andMe or, like, one of those things. But, like, they were able to, like, track and track and track because they had DNA evidence from this dude. But they weren't ever able to, like, attach it to something. But she, she right. the way she writes this book is so good. And she you can just tell the level of research and care that she put into this. And she actually talks to some of the survivors of his you know, attacks and stuff like that. And she's so, she's just so great about it. So she is a complete badass who, mom, who, she was a mom. What was that book called? It's so called I'll Be Gone in the Dark. I actually think. Okay. <laughs> I'll Be Gone hey, in the Dark. Hey, there. Um, so this hey, book is, is, this book is super good. And I actually haven't, like I said, I haven't watched the, the HBO one. Um, but yeah, but I will. So I will for sure, like, uh, put everything in the show notes. Yeah. Like, all of the different uh, book and uh, shows. Books and, and shows like and that, stuff. So yeah, that you for guys sure. can go check everything out. Yeah. So it, Another it my. OK, so uh, there was one more that I kind of wanted to cover, but it's even even if we had like five episodes just dedicated to this one, it would be. It wouldn't be enough because there's so much going on in it, but there's some really badass, I know, there's some really badass moms um, connected with this, but it's the Atlanta child murders. So there's been a lot of documentaries that have come out with this. I think the most recent one on HBO is um, Atlanta's, Atlanta's Missing and Murdered, uh, The Lost Children, I think is what it's called. And, I mean, major discretion. I've watched parts of it, but it's hard to watch because they show, like, these crime scene photos. And these were just kids. It's so sad. A lot of the mothers of these missing children, especially Camille Bell, put together a committee. I think it was called Committee to Stop Children or Child Murdered in Atlanta. I mean dozens of kids are going missing and their bodies are being found and it's continuing and continuing and you know if you watch the documentaries or or you read about it in articles you'll see just like you know it's very connected to racism in Atlanta there's a lot there's so much going on um they do eventually arrest and convict someone um but to this day they're not sure if he's responsible for all of them because there were so 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 many happening in this short span of time but that one it's it's incredibly sad to read about because it's just dozens of kids um but there was some really badass moms who were were doing everything they could to help solve these these crimes of of their children um, so there's a bunch of different documentaries. The most recent one on HBO that I that I watched was was that the um, Atlanta's missing and murdered. So that's just like an honorable gotcha. mention because that has so 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 much detail. But if you want to uh, know more about that one, you can go online for that one too. But Do yeah, it. Do it. that's that's Do it. that's them. Yeah, girl, <laughs> that's them. That's them. No, you you spoke about so many that are. Well, I mean, all of them. Every single one of them needs to be covered, in my opinion. Yeah. So, 
I think that's just a precursor to what will come, but also <laughs> gives you guys a little something, something to go check out in the meantime while we cover some good moms coming up here. So, dang, get it, girl. Get yeah. It, girl. I'm going to need to get a TV to go check these things out. Hell yeah. No, they're all very good. <laughs> Obviously, like, I mean, our listeners know, like, Rachel and I have been into true crime for, you know, a while. <laughs> so, I think mean, even before we became moms. Yep. And then, you know, just everything kind of, you know, your perspective on these things. And when you when you are watching um, anything related to a mom, it changes after you've had kids. And um, these are just, you know, some very interesting stories that are a lot harder. Like a lot of these I saw before I became a mom and then now watching them afterwards or like re- like watching parts of them. It's like, oh, oh, my gosh, like your heart just hurts that much more for these families and these these mothers and these children so all very good yeah. watches yep. or reads um so for sure check it out watches or reads and that's for that's sure the crime y'all out. we've done now 10 crime. episodes that's 10 right that's 10 episodes that's 10. on uh, true, true crime, crime. crime yes yeah it is 10 it is, it is 10 episodes on crime little bonus episodes here and there um We are going to start a, uh, you know, good mom, badass mom series coming up here. Um, And then we will be going back and forth constantly forever for the rest of our lives. So, um, (laughs) but right now it's going to be fun. It's going to be a palate cleanser episode style to kind of bring us back down different kind of topics, things that we can talk about that are just mom relatable, you know, a, a change of pace to say the least so for sure that will be happening pretty soon pretty soon but thank you for that i i'm excited those are things you know that well i shouldn't be excited but you know you know my crime right right head needs to go check these things out so i i will for sure we're wrapping wrapping up with our uh, true crime series we will definitely be back with true crime as you can tell by today's episode and all of any previous episode where we mentioned stuff we're, we're definitely coming back to true crime because there's so much mom crime to cover. But in the meantime, if you have any badass or good or uplifting, inspirational mom stories, whether they're your own or not, please reach out to us. We want to interact with you guys. Like we want to bring bring everybody in. So interact with us. Email us any um, stories you have at wine time moms at gmail.com or you can message us them if you want to go that route you can find us on instagram and tiktok wine underscore time underscore pod that's w h h i n e what it's always the hardest <laughs> Wine underscore time underscore pod. <laughs> W-H-I-N-E. You guys got to remember that H in there. Yes. For any, anything you guys do, we are whining here. We are complaining. Yes. Um, yeah, you need that. You need that for sure in there. Make sure you go follow those accounts, add those accounts, share those accounts. You know, also leave a review or a rating on Apple or Spotify. That helps us to uh, show and grow. Then with with those new episodes coming out as well, that's a good place. Like the the Facebook, we have a Facebook group as well. Forgot to say that, but um, Facebook, Instagram, those are good places to see when we kind of update anything. So if we're going to have a topic and we need you to send stuff in, that's a good place to go check those out. So maybe you want to send your stories and hear your story on the pod as well. So go there, do that, and we will be coming back. Next week is going to be a... Not crime related. Not episode, crime related. So it's going to be kind of crazy, but it's exciting. <laughs> I can't wait. And hopefully you guys love it and let us know what you guys think. We will talk to you guys next week. We'll see you later. Okay. Love you. Bye. Yeah, love you. Bye.